Oh, man. This interview is probably going to be a little different than some of the other stuff you've done. We go a little more in depth. And so I this doubt it. a little more serious. Okay. If okay. I ask anything you don't want to answer, just say so. Okay. And okay. if I don't talk about anything that you want to talk about, right. just let me know. Okay. All right? All right. Cool. Let me know when we are good to go. Let's talk about the fucking sunburn on my forehead. It's and let's talk about tomorrow. the aliens that's out there. We want to talk about that. Let's talk about the aliens in my fucking brain. In the brain. That's what I want to talk about. You got aliens right here in the back of the brain. Aliens in my brain. Aliens this big. Let's talk about that. In the brain this big. In the brain this big, but aliens are this big. And you know how tall he is? Seven foot eight. Seven foot eight. It just looks like an illusion. You know how tall he was two years ago? Seven foot nine. See that? And then four years ago? Seven foot twelve. And then five years ago? Eight foot twelve. See, and then six years ago, (laughs) he was three point, he was three six, three feet one. Three foot one. I thought I saw a pattern there, but obviously <laughs> the pattern has changed. No pattern. No pattern. No um, pattern. What was what was your life like growing up, and how do you think it influenced your music? My life was really shitty growing up, and obviously it influenced my music. All you gotta do is just pick up a Slim Shady album. You know, I feel like <clears throat> once you listen, if you listen to the album in depth, there's really not many questions to ask. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty much coming out and telling the world, like, this is what I've been through, this is what I've seen, this is what I've done, you know what I'm saying? You know, so. So for somebody who may not have heard your album before they see this interview, how would you define your sound? I mean, what do you, what do you um, for someone who doesn't know? I would say, I represent like, I feel like I represent hip hop. Like, I just, I, I've lived it all my life and I, I know it, I grew up on it, you know what I'm saying? And I would say my sound is just pretty much for anybody who, anybody who's who's ever been through some bullshit in their life, who's ever been through some, you know what I'm saying, trifling times or whatever, you know, okay. which we pretty much all have. So, you know, I represent those people. All I do is pretty much reflect what's went on in my life through my music, you know. How old were you when you started rapping? Like nine. I was, nine, I was about nine when I started listening to rap. I started rapping, like writing my own rhymes about 14, 13, 14. And it just kept getting better at it. Better and better and better and better. And w- what kind of influences do you guys bring to the sound of the music? My ass. We bring the ass. We bring a one chunky big ass to, to it. Two big powerful ass cheeks. Ass cheeks, just powerful ass. You ever seen a powerful ass cheek? <laughs> I refuse to answer that question. It sounds to me. <laughs> well, like musically, what what influences? Like you talked about the sort of influences that your, that your lyrics are about. But like uh, what sort of what's the sound tea. like? Yeah. Starting with Ice T. Ice Reckless, T. So yeah, up. Ice T. Reckless was the first rap song I ever heard. I was in like the fourth or fifth grade, and that was like the first rap record I ever heard. But like growing up, I had a lot of influences like LL Cool J, Beastie Boys. Run DMC, you know what I'm saying? Some of the earlier groups, you know. NWA. Yeah, NWA. Two Live Crew. I mean, but you can, the list goes on and on. It's like just depending on what you, I grew up on so many different things, you know what I'm saying? As I got older, the, the new thing was hot, you know what I'm saying? It was Run DMC, then yeah, it was Two right. Live Crew, then it was NWA, then it was right. Run DMC again. Just whoever right. was putting out albums. Basically, just, he, was checked like a every, he checked everything. No matter what, if it was whack, we would know because we would buy it. We bought every every tape that was out, we bought it. Mm-hmm. He had a tape collection that was incredible. Yeah. I didn't have to buy no tapes, because he had all the tapes, like, well, Marsh got it. I can go dub it. Yep. What's your, what's your uh, writing process like? Oh. oh. <laughs> wow. We're not going to tell you that, because then what if, if somebody's you, watching that, you. and we tell you, we got to kill you, because you'll give away the formula. Nah. Um, my writing process is basically, I don't try to sit down and think of shit. You know, I just, I let the thoughts pop into my head and then I write them down. You know what I'm saying? I let it come natural. It's not something that I try to search for or whatever. Right. I got to let the stuff, throughout the course of my day, I might find like six to 12 ideas, you know what I'm saying? Right. And like write them down, just jot them down. And then at the end of the week or the end of two weeks or whatever, I stack my ideas up and then I'm right. ready to write a rhyme, like ready to, you know, full All scale. Right. If somebody listen to the album there and they should listen that most of the stuff he say reflect from his life. Is that he don't too much think or like try to think creatively. He just take from his life and animate yeah, it with lyrics. Yeah. That's how you do it, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. 
does that kind of help you work through some stuff? I mean, because some of your songs are about pretty serious things. Yeah, so I don't kill people. I think it is a therapy for him. It is. It's a therapy for every rapper. I think you write some stuff. It's like therapy. Yeah, every rapper out there, hip hop has always been known to like. Hip hop is like pretty much autobiographical. You know what I'm saying? It's like. It just you you reflect your life. You you tell what you know. You tell your side of the story. You know what I'm saying? You 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 say things from from your point of view. Like this is my point of view. This is the way I see life. It's always been like that. You know? Do you think your material deserves to have like a parental warning on it? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. definitely. Yeah. Definitely. But it's not gonna stop the kids from getting it. You know what I'm saying? It don't make it don't make I it was like, 11, 12 years old listening to Two Live, two live Crew, crew sneaking in the rated R movies. You know right, what I'm saying? It's right. not kids are kids, and kids are a lot smarter than we really give them credit for. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's how it is. People want to try to blame music like the kids in yeah. Colorado and shit like that. People want to try and blame the music for it, but those kids are really crazy. Just you know to start what I'm with. And the parents, and the parents should be checked for that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They always try to blame, find something else like, yeah. well maybe Ooh, it's, it's a music. Slim shady it's a, record. It's a music. It, it's music, or it's stuff. it's it's the movie that the kids seen that right, made them do it. Right. If they wouldn't have seen that movie, they wouldn't have did it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Or if they wouldn't have listened to that record, they wouldn't have did it. Come on, man. Come on. It don't just take one song to make a person go nuts. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's a growth thing. That's a grooming. If I'm gonna jump off a bridge, I'm gonna jump off a bridge because I want to jump off a bridge, not right. because somebody told me to. Not because you know Ice T said he jump off the bridge. You know what I'm saying? We jump off the bridge because you gonna jump off the bridge. You wanna anyway. jump off the fucking bridge? You wanna jump off the bridge? You wanna, jump, you wanna jump off the bridge with us? That's all three of us go right now. We were gonna jump. Come on, bridge. man. Everyone's we about to doing do it. it. We about to do it. Everybody doing it. Everyone's doing it. Everyone's jumping off the bridge, dude. Dude, everyone is jumping off the, the bridge, bridge, man. You Everyone come jump off the bridge with us. If I jump off the bridge, I can't listen to your CD anymore. It won't be a CD. You can listen to my CD on the way down. On the way down. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll do it. You do it with us. Yeah, we got another bridge jumper with us. Catch it live. Did you ever, did you ever run into nope. resistance? No, no, because, no. Well, I mean, because you're a white guy. And oh, God. of the subject matter. Oh, my like, God. Oh, my He's God. I'm white. white. He's white. Fuck. Man, I didn't know you was white. All that time, People get like the fuck out of here, dude. You telling me this guy's white? As far as I can tell, I mean, this dude's white. <laughs> Man, <laughs> dude. No sunburn. 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 I'm red. He's I'm red. red. No, did people have like expectations and they were like, oh, this guy isn't going to be able to do Can it. Can I say this? I don't know. You have to ask those people. Listen, we, I tell you this. Those people. I went to a, a black dominant high school, and we used to. I used to sneak him in there into the lunchroom, right? And I asked to be like, they should be like, we want to battle you. I should be like, nah, <laughs> can't battle me. Why don't you battle the white boy over there first? And everybody would be like, we used to sit in there, we used to sit in there and beat on tables and I'll kill him. Man, he the dude would bust a little rhyme, then Emma come out and kill him the whole lunchroom, which is all but black dominate school would be looking like, damn. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's just how how messed that's so so it's kind of like it's a catch 22 it's like that's good that they can acknowledge that he got skill but it's bad that it's like wow why I so expected that he right. white and can do that you know what i'm saying but we used to, i wish that we would have been betting like thousands of dollars cuz we would be <laughs> very rich i mean time we did we, we wouldn't need to rap we now. wouldn't need to rap no records or nothing we'll be rich man cuz it's just that's how crazy they thought it was like it's a white rapper dude no but ride. everything is always looks everything is based yeah. on looks you know what i'm saying if i think you look like a herb I'm gonna I'm gonna fuck with you. Right. Just because I, I don't like the way you look. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, That's I don't like the way is. this guy dresses or the way he wears his socks or the way he, you know what I'm saying? Right. Everything, you know? You're gonna fuck with somebody just, people are gonna mess with you by looks. Growing up as a kid in school, you know what I'm saying? Whether it's, whether you go to a mixed school or, or, or you go to an all black school, school all or white. you go to an all white school, you're gonna pick things out to mess with kids about. No matter what. You know what I'm saying? Growing up, that's just what you do. Oh, this kid's fat. Oh, this, this kid's, kid's too skinny. You know what I'm saying? This All kid's right. got buck teeth. This All kid's right. got a big forehead. You know what I'm saying? This kid looks like Chris Rock. You know what I'm saying? You know what <laughs> this kid looks like Chris Rock. You know what I'm saying? We've been through all that. Yeah. Do you think it made you work harder to get respect as, as Nah, I sat on my ass. Yeah, he sat, he sat out on his ass for a long time. He didn't work hard. Nah, definitely. I had to work harder. I had to get, there was a certain level of respect I had to get. You know what I'm saying? It was definitely an uphill battle, but, you know, I feel like I'm winning it. You know, I'm, I'm slowly winning over the respect of everybody, whether 
it's, it's like now it's 1999, we're going into the year 2000 and people got to look at, you know what I'm saying? I don't care if you're black, white, right. orange, Green, red, purple, whatever color pink, you are, whatever. that kid can skateboard, that kid can ride a bike, that kid can rap, right. that dude can play football, right. you know what I'm saying? So. Dude, it don't really matter. I think the, the youth that's coming up now is really dope, you know what I'm saying? The color orientation thing, they don't get into all that stuff. They just, whoever they cool with, they cool with. By personality, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because when we shit, we shit the same. We shit the same. You know what I'm saying? It right. stinks just as bad. Right. Whether, My shit don't stink no worse than his, his shit, shit stinks. But no, hold on, I take that back. What? His shit stinks. I want you to know, his shit stinks bad. But what he trying to say is like, whether it's Joe Montana or Warren Moon throwing a touchdown for your city, you don't care. It's still a it's, touchdown. It's, it's all about the winning points. and you just care six about the points. team spirit and the six points. That's all you care about. You know what I'm saying? When Joe Montana throws a field goal. Yeah. And, and, then, a, and then Barry Sander makes a home run. Dunk. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's just it's a hard, it's a hard thing right there. I'm not going to argue that point. Right. How'd you hook up with uh, Dr. Dre? What was it like to work with him? He came to his classroom. He Why came to my there? classroom when I was in first grade. Right. And he was like, yo, Slim, I really think. I want to groom you from first grade to, to you drop out of high school. You know what I'm saying? Dude? Nah. Some lady said that once, though. Yeah. Um, <laughs> nah, I was just like in a lot of rap competitions and, and um, I was in the 97 Scribble Jam, and then towards the end of 97, I was in the Rap Olympics, you know, and like taking second place in the Rap Olympics, kids from Interscope were there, and they got the tape, they got a tape, that, like my demo tape, so to speak, and I gave it to them, they took it to Interscope, and Jimmy Iovine, uh, the head of Interscope, he liked it, and he played it for Dre, Dre was like, yo, let's find this kid, let's let's hook him up or whatever, you know, and they found me, so. What was it like to work with him? Terrible, terrible, the worst experience That's the I greatest ever. producer in rap history, you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. it's the greatest, man. Dre's the best, to me, the best producer of all time, so obviously, no doubt, I mean. No doubt. That's what what was it like to work with him? That's not a question that's never been asked. That's right. a question that's always asked, and it's kind of like self-explanatory. It's like, what am I supposed to say? Well, well, like I, I fucking hate it. I know? mean, how does he communicate his ideas, and how does he get your ideas in a way that someone else wouldn't be able to? Because I mean, he obviously succeeds. How does he what? How does he get your about, ideas to come out, and how does he bring an idea yeah, to relationship, the relationship, that chemistry. Kind of, because there's a yeah, chemistry, the chemistry there. Yeah. There's kind of a chemistry, like when him and, and Snoop Dogg first got together, there's a chemistry there. It's like this, I'm a lyricist and I'm a writer. I write and he makes beats and he produces and he has a vision and he can make that come to life. So all I gotta do, every Dre beat, damn near every Dre beat that I hear, I wanna rap over, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, it makes me instantly think of things. So like I said, it's, it, it's just a chemistry. It's a, it's a chemistry type thing, you know? It's like we just get together and, and, and in one studio session, we can knock out one or two songs, like right there, you know what I'm saying? Where do you think rap's headed? Downhill. Downhill. Fucking, it's crashing. It's rap over, is crashing. Down. Rap is dead. Rap is not selling any records, <laughs> and nobody's liking it, so <laughs> it's fucked up. Uh, it's really fucked up. I think rap all I'm about to gone. cry. Yeah, I'm about to go. cry. It's over for us. <laughs> We're down. It's finished. We can put. Rap is we... headed. I mean, Rap is not headed. Rap is it's going to the be biggest here. shit. Rap is like hip hop is the biggest thing. You know what I'm saying? It's embracing the youth. So, so. Uh, always be. why do you think it's why do you think rap's still like a vital musical force? I, I refuse to answer that question. For the answer that I stated earlier. For the answer that I stated earlier. I think when it came out, a lot of a lot of the music establishment were like, ah, yeah, this is you know, it's just a fad. It's just a trend. It's not going to last. Guess what? It did. I think rap embraces the youth. You know what I'm saying? So as long as it's always youth. Rap is the voice of youth. Hip hop is the voice of youth because because of you know what this I mean? stuff right here. Whatever this means, <laughs> that what is that? Dribbling. Dribb oh, dribbling. dribbling. This is what it is. It's the dribbling effect. That's what it is. Nah, it's the dribbling. Oh, it's the dribbling from. Fix that shit. Oh. <laughs> dribbling effect. <laughs> what's what's your relationship with a live audience like? Horrible. Horrible. Horrible, they hate me. They hate to jump on stage, they take our mics from us, take the records and break them. They take our inflatable mummy and DDT it. I mean, it's just it's a hard life we got out here. Nah, the reaction has been good so far. I mean, 
especially with the Warp Tour. You know what I'm saying? It's a different crowd for me to perform in front of. So it's like, you know, everything is is has been on the up and up. You know what I'm saying? The crowds are perceiving me well. So I'm cool right. with it. I, right. You know what I'm saying? I I didn't I, I feel like I feel like this. I like to work for my money. I like to, you know what I'm saying? I like to go out and earn crowds because it makes me feel like I'm working. You know what I'm saying? Not just come out on stage and stand just stand there. there one spot. Just stand in one spot and the crowd just loves me the whole time just because of who I am. You know what I'm saying? I I, I wanna give a show, I wanna entertain people, I wanna Move. make people, I wanna be in touch with the crowd and make people, you know what I'm saying, talk to people, keep eye contact with the people and look at them, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and really try to see what they're feeling. These are the people that's buying my records, so they're paying my rent, you know what I'm saying, so you gotta keep in touch with them fans, you know. So, so the audience can affect your performance, it sounds like. Definitely, they well, yeah, can. Definitely, because we don't. We not yeah. those kind of MCs that go on stage and don't care what they do. We feed off the crowd every time. Every yeah, if show. a crowd is not, if a crowd is not making no noise, I'm gonna address it. Whatever the crowd is doing, I'm going. I, I'm gonna address it. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna be like, if they ain't making no noise, I'm gonna stop my record. And stop and, stop and be talk like, yo, what the fuck is going on? You know what I'm saying? You ain't feeling me or whatever. You know, if they're throwing shit, if right. they're acting rowdy, if they're right. fighting in the crowd, I'm gonna address it. And if, they're, you know? and if they're not hype, we just we, we work harder sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Jump in the crowd, whatever we got to do. Jump in the crowd, take our clothes off, backflip off speakers, off and look smack like, fans. And beat up their pets. <laughs> you mentioned that the Warped Tour audience is different than your normal audience. How's it different? Yeah, it's different? It's different because, like, ever since January, I've been on tour, like, pretty much nonstop. And every tour that I've done so far has been pretty much strictly hip-hop crowds, you know what I'm saying? Hip-hop shows, and this is like, you got alternative, you know what I'm saying? You got Blink-182 to Ice-T, so, to, to me, so it's, these people are like, you got people that come to see me, you got people that come to see Suicidal Tendencies, you got people that, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Pennywise, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so it's like, it's just all types of crowds, you know? So that's why I say, when I look into the crowd and I'm saying my words, and the whole front row might know it, but the people in the back might not know the words of my songs because they ain't heard my album yet. Or they, they barely know who Eminem is, you know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to That's what we win work them people over, right? like, get the respect of them people. We want to work them. You mentioned how long you've, you've been out on tour. What's the biggest sacrifice that you've made for your oh career God. so far? Not seeing my daughter, not a seeing life. my little girl. Having a life. Yeah, not having a life. And you know, sleep. Pretty much. Yeah, no sleep, no sleep. It's people don't understand how much work this shit really is. It's really work, it's work. It's not, you know what I'm saying, oh, you gotta be having so much fun. You, you got the girls and you got, you know, the fans and, and you're, outside, you're outside, you're performing and you're doing this and you're doing that and you're drinking and you're, you know what I'm saying? You're, fun, you're smoking weed, you're shooting heroin, you're snorting coke, you know what I'm saying? You're doing all of this shit, smoking be crack and a bunch of shit and you gotta be having fun. It's not always, it's, it's not what it's really cracked up to be, you know what I'm saying? How old's your daughter? 80. Oh, my fault. <laughs> nah, she's three. She's three. What, um, what drives you? I mean, what keeps you at it? Our bus. Our tour bus. Our tour bus gets us. That's what makes us, drives us. Well, and what motivates you to rephrase it? I think the Our tour manager. Our tour manager. <laughs> What motivates him? Kicks us in the ass. The manager, incredible Paul Rosenberg. So. Guys, you got 20 minutes to go on. Here's a mic. I think the sick world motivates him. The world. Yeah. The world. My critics. little girl. Critics. Add fuel to the fire. Assholes. Punks. Bitches. You know what I'm saying? Pimps. Pushes. Pimps. <laughs> bitches. Sluts. Hoes. Transvestites. Drugs really motivate us more than anything, you know what I'm saying? Like I said before, big shout out to heroin, smack, you know. Well, I mean, if you couldn't, if you couldn't perform, what would you do? I mean, would you ever think about it? Sit in a wheelchair. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I'd do. If we couldn't perform. Sit at home all day, beat my shit to death. This man would be beat in jail. Beat my shit to death. He'd be in jail, guaranteed, easily, if he wasn't performing. I'd be in jail. I probably yeah. I'd be somewhere up. stupid. I'd be somewhere stupid. I Murdering have somebody a job. or something. If I if I didn't do this rap shit, I'd be up in your crib right, right now. now. <laughs>
I'm gonna dial. The immortal words of Tretch. Tretch. What do you think is the biggest risk that you've had to take for your career? Um, drugs. <laughs> nah, I think, I think the biggest risk was the sacrifice and then his family time. Yeah, my family, I don't get to see, I don't get to his see family, family members. that he started. My girl, my daughter, you know what I'm saying? I don't get to see them, stuff like that, you know? And one of the main things that's really fucked up is when people piss you off, you can't hit them in the face yeah. because we can't do nothing sued. no more because the way we used to be, we was the bully you can't, busters. We can't act like how we want to act. How we are. How we really want to act. You know what I'm saying? Because the higher powers that be won't allow it. Yeah, Judge Wild. We can't even just, we can't even look at nobody no more. Judge Judy. We can't argue. We can't do nothing. We got to walk, we got to, it's just crazy, man. How do you do that? It's like, hard, man, especially when you, the way we were. I've got out of control a couple of times. He, he, you know, he, can't, he can't live with it. I think I can, but I don't think he can live with it. No, it's really hard, man. When somebody, when somebody disrespects you and, and on just a, a, just a regular oh, person, person, to, person to person level, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Or on a street level, somebody disrespects you. You want to do something to retaliate, you but know you what I'm saying? Can't. And you, you know can't, you gotta learn to control your temper and you gotta take the, the fuck yous and you suck and shit like that or in the, the crowd. You even, gotta take Even the slapping you or whatever they do to you. You can't nah, really. if somebody slaps me, then yeah. I was trying to be good for TV, but we was lying right there on that part. <laughs> if you hit us, we're gonna hit you back. Believe that. <laughs> well, it sounds like you've been able to have the career that you've been able to direct it yourself a lot of the time. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, so what is, how do you define success? My ass. My ass. Back to the powerful ass cheeks. <laughs> it's like, uh, success? I don't know, man. That's funny. That's a funny word, success, because, like, success is like... When you Speak on it. When you succeed it. You know speak what I'm saying? Speak on it. What if we succeed it? Speak on all, success. I don't know how to speak on success. You know what I'm saying? That's a deep, that's a deep thing. I don't know. What to say? I'm, I'm cool with success. As long as it doesn't get too out of hand, as long as it, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to keep shit, I'm trying to keep shit balanced and, Down and to trying earth. to maintain, you know? And what people don't realize is like, you're a regular person. I'm a regular person. When I go out on that stage and if I'm on stage and, and my voice cracks or I'm losing my voice because I've been on tour for so long or I'm, whatever happens, if I slip and fall down and trip over a cord, whatever, you know what I'm saying? People don't realize that you're a regular person. You're out here making your living. You're trying to entertain this crowd and whatever happens, happens. You know what I'm saying? And you're just a human being. And when you don't want to sign nine million autographs when you're standing outside of your bus, you know what I'm saying? And you sign a few of them, and then them other people that didn't get the autographs are like, oh, fuck you, fuck you, you asshole. You know what I'm saying? You know, people don't realize you're a regular person. You're a human being, you know? And that's one of the hardest things. That's one of the hardest things that, you know, people have trouble coming to grips with, you know what I'm saying? That you're a regular. That you're a regular person. That, that you just, bleed. Yeah, and exactly. you use the bathroom. So like, what do you do when you have your downtime? How do you keep your head together? Well, downtime? What the fuck about? is that? What is that? What's downtime? Do you, do you have it? There any? is no, I mean, nah. No, we've been touring since January. It's been like nonstop. Well, we had like what, No downtime. Off? Yeah, oh, we, we had 13 days off. 13 days 13 off. days. And I beat my shit all day. And that was it. Nothing but beating. Beating and meeting. I meeting. masturbate a lot. I masturbate a lot. But masturbation is cool. Safe yeah. sex. Yeah, that would be the ultimate, ultimate safe sex. Ultimate okay. safe sex. Use Especially condoms. if you wear a condom. Yeah, see? Yeah. Use, <laughs> use condoms. Don't do drugs. Leave it up to me. What, what do you guys think? Of the heat, it's fucking exhausting. That's what I was going to ask you. What do you think is sort of the most important thing you've learned since you've kind of gotten a real level of commercial success that you might not have had early on in your career? That I have two powerful ass cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> and big balls. <laughs> nah, I don't know, man. Um, commercial I'm still success. learning. I'm still, I'm still learning. That's still. That's deep words. I got a lot of shit to learn still. Yeah. You know, every day I learn something new. Every day. You know, every day I meet somebody new. So I don't know. 
Maybe ask me in 20 years. 20 years. No pets. Yeah. Are you happy? That's the most, the most number one asked question that I got on Twitter is, can you please ask him if he's happy? I'm never happy. Never. Are you happy when you're angry? You said something like that before. I'm happy when I'm angry. Gotcha. Yeah, for sure. So when he gets angry, he'll be happy. So you guys get that. That's okay. why I bitch so much. <laughs> I try to stay happy. Well, where do you see yourself in 20 years? We'll be old. We'll be 29. Old? Come on. Seriously? Seriously? In 20 years, we'll be 29. <laughs> I'm nine years old. And I'm uh, good. I mean, are you... Hey, Satan, let's fuck! <laughs> Do you, do you still want to be performing, or do you ever see a day oh, where you want nah, to Nah, hell no. Hell no. When I'm 30, when I'm 30, I'm done. Fuck that, yeah. I'm done. I'm done. You got to be set up right. Oh, you can't be out here old, because some of these people looking old performing, you looking like, wow. Crazy. Like, crazy. Like, I'm becoming what I used to make fun of. Like, it's, damn, you still can't pay your rent, dog? Yeah, yeah, you know you can't, what I'm saying? You can't pay your rent, you you're 60. This, this 60 we what are you doing, tour, jumping you know off of speakers and backflipping and shit? Back you're 60, you shouldn't do that. Well, where's back... your walker, you know nah, what I'm saying? I'm done, I'm done. I'm, I'm, I want to, you know, my main thing was I wanted to get the respect. I wanted to show, like, I wanted to show the world and people who didn't believe in me that I could do this, you know what I'm saying? And now that I'm doing it, it's kind of like I've proven my point. And, I'm gonna keep proving my point until I'm tired of the rap music, but I'm not gonna do it. I'm, I can't do it forever, you know what I'm saying? None of us can do, you know? You can't ask questions forever, you know what I'm saying? All right. You she can't have the camera forever. Yeah. Yeah. You know? No, you can't yeah. ask questions forever. You just start, yeah. Yeah. You start maybe, answering them. Maybe you, you can't like, ask questions forever. You be like, well, what color is the sky? It's blue. You probably got about 87 more questions on there, so you could probably ask questions forever. I can't rap forever. I can't rap forever. My voice is going. But we can masturbate forever. Yeah. Okay. Uh, One more. Is there anything I didn't ask you guys that you want to talk about or anything you just want Man, to say? Man, you know what we're going to talk about seriously? The about most, my syphilis. Oh, no, no. The serious thing he want to talk about <laughs> that Slim said he wants to address to everybody that's watching. It's my boss. It's his right hook. My right hook. I want you to observe. My right. His my right. It's so Zoom powerful. in on this. His, wait, Zoom wait, in on this. Your chest, though. Oh my your chest. God. His chest Did you is see this so, chest? Have you ever seen a chest this big, big? Honestly. God. Be for real. You ever that's 3D. You've got a 3D glass. You can really There's no chest in the world that exists. No chest or right that hook that's like this. Or right hook. So we want you all to send uh, $5 donations to the Yo, studio. but you heard about them two big dudes that are coming over later. You right? heard about the two big dudes, right? No. The two dudes. Oh, the two dudes. No, the two dudes the two have been together. Dudes. Been together. They've been together. Through for all a while. that stuff in the music business. The two guys have been fighting. You know what I'm talking about, right? The two dudes. He's nuts. <laughs> <laughs>